Right, so about a week ago on this channel, we tapped into a new genre on TikTok, and the genre in question was the church genre. And this was because there was a bit of a back and forth between two creators, one being Josh Benson, the rapper, and the other one being Taylor and Michael. Now, in case you didn't see that video, I'll give you a very quick recap, but of course, if you want to see all the details, it'd be best to check out the full video. But long story short, Taylor Michael makes a lot of videos about Christianity. In fact, his family actually run a church. And in a lot of people's opinions, there was always something sketchy going on with Taylor Michael. Like, he would talk about raising money, like a ridiculous amount of I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. But then all that money would go into his church where he is apparently second in control of. He could control the funds. So now obviously people are wondering, is the money even going back in the church? Because if you look at Taylor's Instagram, he's got supercars and massive houses left, right and center. And there was plenty more stuff that people found sketchy. But one person in particular who definitely thought that Taylor seemed a bit sketchy was Josh Benson, the rapper. And he released this video. I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all. I think that this Christian YouTuber with over 3 million subscribers on YouTube is stealing money that people have donated to his ministry and is using said money for personal gain. And I've got some pretty interesting evidence to back up my claim. Now we went through this TikTok of a previous video, so I'm not gonna go back through it all. But basically what he says is there's a lot of sketchiness behind the scenes that you can see. Like when he searched Taylor's name in the church and the IRS, it didn't look like they were registered and whatnot. He also mentions the fact that Taylor has like a really expensive car, like where's that came from? And he questions a lot of things about Taylor, to which Taylor then responded. Hey Josh, saw how much you liked my new car, so. I figured I'd make this response video in front of it for you. Yeah, his response was as bad as you'd probably expect. I mean, his basic response is, Josh, you're wrong. In fact, here's some donations that I've made to my own church. Which again, doesn't really prove anything if Taylor still has control of the funds. Like he could take the money out if he wanted to. Now Josh ended up making a few follow-up videos that we spoke about in my last video. A big portion of them was actually people who've had experience with the church itself. And there was a lot of messages from people saying that they've had a really bad experience there. I mean, here's one for example saying, they told F1 that my husband, boyfriend at the time, kidnapped me. They were gonna call the police and have them find me. They were going to Blank's house asking where I was. They were harassing and stalking me to the point where I had to get a new phone number because they wouldn't leave me alone. There was even screenshots of Instagram comments from Taylor where he's replied to people saying like, spoken like a broke person. Because of course, a big portion of what Josh was saying is that it seems like the church specifically wants to target rich people. Which when you add that onto the accusations that they are potentially allegedly stealing money, that would make sense. And that's pretty much where we left the last video. Now, since that video, the church itself has responded. Now it's a 12 minute video or maybe even a live stream by the looks of it. I don't really know how Facebook works. But it's 12 minutes of them basically just denying everything. Now it's important to know here that Taylor's not in the video, two other people are that I believe are also part of the family running this church. But there's a lot of problems that stuck out to me when I was watching this video. Now the main one being, they didn't really say much. Which might sound weird because the video is 12 minutes long, but they basically just read out every accusation and go, that's not true. And that's it. They elaborate on some points, kind of, but like they don't exactly show proof or anything, which really isn't a good look, especially when Josh Benson showed a lot of proof to back up his claims. It doesn't hurt me to be persecuted. I can handle it. But when it starts coming against my wife, my children, the church, the businesses that God has raised up in the last day to, um, to bless people with, that's where you start stepping over onto territory where you are, um, are are bringing reproach to the body of Christ. Yeah, so straight away, you can see that he's taken the approach that none of this is true, and he feels like this is just an attack on the church. Now, it is important to note here that Josh Benson is a Christian himself. He makes content about being a Christian. So it's not as if it's just a random TikToker who hates Christians for whatever reason, right? He is himself. Let me read this to you. A couple of scriptures from the word of God concerning false accusations. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16 says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And also it says in Proverbs, seven things that the Lord hates, it says they are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to run to evil, a false witness that speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Yeah, so as you heard, he read some scriptures about false accusations, as he said, and it's just a bit baffling to me because like I mentioned before, Josh Benson showed a lot of proof to back up his claims. And a lot of the claims in these videos are undeniable, especially like the Instagram comments from Taylor's old Instagram account. Now I'm not gonna play the full 12 minute response because like I mentioned before, it is a lot of them just reading accusations and then saying, that's not true. But one accusation in particular that they completely deny is the whole money stuff, right? They say that they don't target rich people and they don't take massive donations of people and whatnot. Well, Josh has actually responded to this response where, 
it tells a different story, but we'll get to that. The first accusation or rumor that we want to address is this, is that we threaten people who leave our church. Is that true? Never have we ever threatened anybody who's left our church. The facts are, is that Jesus said there would be offenses. It, it's just a given. People are going to get offended. Mm -hmm. See, this is what I'm saying, right? He read out the accusation. He sits there and goes, oh, so people are saying that we threaten people who leave our church. Is this true? And then Jesus goes, no. And then moves on to a different topic. Because at this point, she now goes on again about the fact that people are just attacking them for no reason. And so we've been here for 21 years. And over 21 years, of course, you're going to have people who get offended. Who disagree. Who disagree. Who feel who have problems. To go another direction. Yeah. Offenses come. That's actual facts. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this is basically their response to everything, right? They deny it. They say that people are offended easily and they're attacking them and whatnot. Like, this is what they go on to do for a while. Now, if you do want to see the response yourself, you can go to the Facebook page, Faith Church Ruston. You can see the response there. Please, though, don't leave any fucking horrible comments, all right? It's bang out of order. But I'm just saying, if you want to watch the full response, it is there. Now, let's actually move on to Josh Benson's response because he had a lot to say about this. It's one thing for me to show stories that victims have shared with me that I believe to be true, but then the podies can just respond and say, uh-uh, that didn't happen. But it's another thing for me to show you clips of things they themselves have said. I mean, this is what I've been saying, right? In Josh Benson's videos, he has showed a lot of proof to back up his claims. Whereas you've now got this response video from the church where they're just denying a thing, but showing no proof. So what are you meant to do as a viewer when you see this? Like, who are you supposed to believe in that situation? Because someone's showing proof and someone isn't. I, I don't get it. You would think with how big the situation has blew up, they would probably put a bit of effort in into like proving it wrong, but they just didn't do that. We're getting persecuted like Jesus said we would. So that's a very interesting thing to say out loud because the large majority of people, myself included, that are calling for some sort of transparency here are Christian. To be clear, Faith Church Rustin and the Pody family aren't being persecuted for their beliefs. Myself and a lot of the alleged victims are just calling for some sort of accountability. Yeah, I think that was a very weird thing to say. And I think in the response video, they were trying to be vague about certain stuff. So people potentially didn't watch Josh's video. Because to the best of my knowledge, I don't believe they mention him by name at all, right? So a lot of people who saw the response, maybe didn't even see the video in the first place. But yeah, the fact that people are criticizing them definitely has nothing to do with their beliefs. Like Josh said, he's a Christian himself. A lot of people who are also criticizing the church are Christian. I think your daughter, who's a pastor on staff as well, actually said it best when she said, when something like a sin comes out about a pastor, it's not always the devil trying to attack them. Rather, someone's sin, finding them out, actually is the mercy of God. I mean, isn't that ironic, eh? Like, that is literally a perfect response to what her dad said. Now, obviously, she didn't say this in response to her dad, but it works. People aren't criticizing you just because they want to attack you. It's because, in a lot of people's eyes, it seems like you have done something wrong. This is because of your actions. Jesus said there would be offenses. It, it's just a given. People are going to get offended. Mm -hmm. We've been here for 21 years, and over 21 years, of course you're going to have people who get offended. My wife and I died laughing when we heard this part. Hate how casual Mary Pody's making all of this sound. Now, if it was like two or three people, hey, maybe they have an axe to grind. Who knows? But the fact that there have been hundreds of people with just disgusting stories about Faith Church, they make you want to puke, you know? And the fact that they're like, hey, people get offended. They leave sometimes. That's not normal. I'm here to tell you, I've been a part of many churches. This is not normal church activity at all. Yeah, I think this should be pretty obvious, right? If more and more people are leaving your church way more than most other churches, should you maybe just like look and think, why is that? Maybe it's not because you just got unlucky and you just managed to somehow get all the easily offended people to come to your church. Maybe it's something you're doing. I now want to show you what a regular church service looks like at Faith Church Ruston. Um, let's do that real quick. You can go. This is good ground. It's good ground. It's good ground. We break this thing tonight. Don't be a That was a video of Pastor Stan Pody lying on the floor of his church during their Millionaire Boot Camp series, while another speaker prompts other members of the church to go up to Stan's borderline unconscious body and lay money on him. Oh, wait, what the fuck? So you're telling me, in this church, this bloke just lies down on the floor as people throw money on him? Bit weird. And as Josh goes on to say, this just isn't normal behavior. Throwing money at a pastor while he lays on the floor with his eyes closed like some sleepy stripper isn't normal activity. It's not. You can already hear the pastors and the members of the church, hey, you took that out of context. No, I didn't. Uh, what context is that correct in? Yeah, I mean, for what I've seen, a lot to do with this church is money. And of course, even though 
probably is pretty obvious, but I am just talking about this church in particular, right? Like, there really does seem to be something not right here. There seems to be some sketchiness going on. Also, did you know that Stan Pody wrote a song called Money Cometh? and they sing it during church. Not normal activity. Money cometh, I mean, it's a great title. You just need to take control and command because Jesus is not in control. Did you know that? God is not in control. It's unbiblical. God is not in control. I think what that sermon illustrates, even if they don't realize it, is what the Podies actually want. More than money, more than clout, they want control. I believe that to be true from the multiple stories I've heard from people claiming that the Podies wanted to control their finances. Oh, let's actually read some of these then. We tried setting up with blank and blank, said it would never work because blank would need to get blank pastor's permission first. Getting with one of the staff tailing about starting a YouTube channel because they have courses you can pay for to know how they did it and slandering people like blank that work. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention in the recap of this video, Taylor has a course that is apparently like $3,000 or something on how to start a YouTube channel. I don't really know what it is. But look, if there's one thing that I've learned from doing these videos, you should never trust anyone that has a course. They had a conversation with me telling me that they felt like God was telling me that going to college is not part of his calling. Yeah, so these are all examples of the fifth church of Ruston wanting control, in his opinion. Nothing about this is normal. And that's how the video ends, with a perfect sentence. Nothing about this is normal. And it doesn't seem like anything about this is normal. I mean, that response video from the Pordies, I believe, that's the, the family name, the surname, right? That response video was kind of the first time I properly heard them speak on like a long form basis, there just did seem to be something up. Like I didn't believe the words coming out of their mouths, but I mean, again, I don't personally have the proof. I don't have experience with them. You know when you just get a feeling about someone? Like I kind of had that feeling, but I could be wrong. That's just an opinion. That's just an assumption. I would also love to know your opinions in the comment section down below. Let me know who you agree with in this situation. Is it Josh, the church, Till, and whoever else? Let me know everything in the comments. And yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please do a like down below, subscribe if you are new, and until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, good. Bye.